it'll okay. like go out of service randomly. Okay, hello. Sorry, I'm trying to get the mount set up, so it took me a minute. Um, oh yeah, I think there's comments, so I need to scoot. Make sure my line is like up here, I think. If the nail, well, I'm gonna have to move this down. Then. If the nail stay right here, let me know if that's gonna be okay for the frame. Um, sorry, I'm still getting a couple things set up. So give me just one sec. Can you join the live on yep. your phone? And then you can, sorry, I had brought that and then it didn't work. Okay, give me two seconds. I need to grab a paper towel. I was trying to get her all prepped um, before the live so we could just jump in. She had a little bit more lifting than I anticipated. So she, um, I didn't do her nails last. So this is Bonnie, my model is Bonnie. She started as my apprentice. Did I finish the cuticles on those? Yeah. Um, she started as my apprentice this week and so I asked her to be my model for the life. Um, so I didn't do her nails last. I didn't know, you know, kind of what was under there. Um, but I knew there was a little bit of lifting, but there's a little bit more than I thought. So the prep took me a little bit longer, I apologize. So I just need to finish um, her cuticles, but she has great cuticles. Like all I've done is like the tapered skiver and there's like hardly anything for me to fix up here. So that's good. So I'm gonna clip some of these cuticles real quick. Normally I would use um, a rain, oh, let me fix this light. The raindrop or a ball bit to kind of go around the sides, but I'll do that later. I'm gonna skip it right now for the purpose of us just moving on but I am gonna do the shaping real fast um, what shape do you normally like Bonnie? Um, more almond but more a little bit more pointed a little bit more pointed yeah okay okay so I guess while I'm finishing the prep do you guys have any like pre questions about build it that you want me to answer. So what my plan is, is I'm going to apply it. I'm gonna walk you step by step through my application um, and kind of go through some tips and tricks I have, some pros and cons and things that I that I feel about build up, build it. Um, I'm gonna use, hang on, one sec. Wondering if you've been able to see how retention is with built it yet. Sorry, say that again. Wondering if you've been able to see how retention is with built it yet. Oh, yes. So I have applied, um, let me do this real quick so it's not loud. I have applied build it. Well, obviously it's new, and so we haven't, you did want them a little shorter. Yes. We haven't obviously, or me personally, I haven't tested the retention for a super long time. But on the few clients that I've been putting it on, um, or not, I guess like maybe five, um, so far none of them have had any chipping, any lifting. It's been about three weeks. And like I checked them out like from the side and the back and everything. Um, one of them I did 
a French tip, so I made sure to leave like that back clear so I could see all lifting if there was any. And there wasn't even a speck of lifting. So the retention um, so far through my trial has been really, really good. Um, but that's just, let's see, has anyone else? Sorry, you can tell me if there's any other ones. Um, yeah, Andrea XO Nails asks, is there a store here in Utah where we can purchase this product? Yes, the there is two, correct me if I'm wrong, but there is, sorry, I think Magpie's on here. So tell me if there's more than two, but there's two. Uh, Marina in at Innovations in South Jordan, she has a Magpie store there. So you can shop Magpie products there. And then Nails by Christina, she's in St. George. You can shop her store there as well. Um, I think those are the only two in Utah. I did used to have a store, some of you may know, I don't have a store anymore. I expanded my salon to be more, to have more education because we have a lot of apprentices. So I took my store out in, in order to do that. Um, so some of these, because like I said earlier, she was lifting quite a bit, as you can see. There's hardly any product left on most of them. But so her nails are a little fragile. So like these little edges here, I'm actually not, I'm gonna leave them. I'm not gonna file them off until we have product on there so that we don't um, shred her nail. Let's just shred this a little. Even if it's not a question, you can tell me if yeah. any other ones. So Pro Nail Studio just said, hi, Queen. Oh, hello. And then Magpie Beauty said, that's correct, Melissa. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, do you have any... Will you make sure that I'm staying, like, above the comments in yeah. frame or whatever? Yeah, you are. Okay. Yeah, some... We might have to do most of... So normally I do my shaping before the product um, because the one of the nice things with build it is you don't have to finish file it if you lay it on correctly um, obviously that that's what a lot of us strive to do with like the big structure gel movement here I guess is we don't want to have to finish file it saves us time you can absolutely do that with build it and so I usually shape the nail prior to product application but a lot of hers i think i'm gonna have to finish the shaping after application which doesn't mean i'm gonna have to finish file the top necessarily because it's not a lot of hand filing i'm gonna have to do after but just like those edges so that we don't like shred the nail apart um her nail studio said i'm late is this a soft gel or a hard gel um, build it is a soft gel so it can soak off um, if you're wondering so all of magpie's gels are soft gel we don't have a hard gel at all we do have build me up that operates like a hard gel but it technically is soakable and so it's not um, a true hard gel so yeah all of our gels are soft gels but if you're wondering in terms of like softness Build Me Up would be like the absolute hardest, um, like substance, I guess. The next in line would be Build It. And then next down and like even more soft is Give Me Strength. And then next down there, like the most soft is Get A Grip and Rubber Up Base Coats. So Build It's kind of like right there in the middle. It's a soft gel and it has a good amount of flexibility um, from looking at the ingredients when I was checking out the SDS sheet and stuff, it looks like um, the adhesion and retention rate is going to be very similar to Get a Grip. It has very similar adhesion properties in it, um, which is nice because Get a Grip stays like very, very well. Um, but if you do have a problem lifter, you may want to use Rubber Up as the base coat as long as they don't have a HEMA allergy. So for her, since she did lift so much, um, and again, like I didn't do her nails before, so I don't know exactly why, but just to be cautious, I am gonna put Rubber Up as the base coat. But just so we're clear um, and that you know, Build It is technically baseless. You don't have to put a base coat under unless you want to. So Build It can be its own base coat. Um, 
but you can put get a grip or rubber up underneath it if you need some extra adhesion which like i said to me it looks like build it and get a grip are going to be very similar in adhesion properties but so if you have a problem lifter um i would add get a grip underneath so i'm going to show you how to do that when i do the um base layer i'm going to show you how we scrub it in the way you need to scrub in your base coat with magpie can be a little different that guy is he's a thing guy too <laughs> oh geez okay we'll leave it at that <clears throat> what was i saying i lost my train of thought uh, scrub layer. oh our, yeah our scrub layer can be just a little different than you may be used to um, if you're familiar with Magpie products, um, some of Magpie's prep work can be a little different than you're used to just all around, right? Because most of their products are HEMA-free, and when you're using HEMA-free products, everything needs to be... Oh, my glove shredded. That's nice. That's fine. Um, everything needs to be prepped a very particular way. Sorry, was there a question? Yeah. Um, Nails by Lexi Craythorn said, curious, what is it about a rubber base that adds adhesion? And did you say get a grip is a rubber base? So yeah, rubber up and get a grip are both rubber bases. However, rubber up is going to be way more rubbery. I don't know how to like explain that differently, but it's like rubber up has a ton of rubbery properties and get a grip has like a medium amount of rubber properties part of what is nice about a rubber base coat is um is the flexibility so kind of like a piece of rubber like a rubber tire if you bend it in half um that rubber does not split right like it you can't like work and break a piece of rubber because it's so rubbery. Whereas like if you have a piece of gel, normally if you bend it enough, it's going to crack. So having a gel that has a lot of rubber properties helps with that flexibility and movement so that it doesn't lift and crack and break. And then one of the reasons um, rubber up is sticks better is because it does have a tiny bit of HEMA. Sorry, before I continue that, let me show you about like the prep. So I'm using um, prep and dehydrate. I put it in like a pump bottle. Prep and dehydrate is pretty crucial to Magpie's adhesion. You can't just use acetone or um, regular alcohol. There is like adhesive properties in prep and dehydrate. There's also like antifungal properties in prep and dehydrate. And so it's really important to use that prior to Magpie because most of our products don't have HEMA. Another thing is the way we scrub. You can't just like dust off the nail like this. We never like dip our brush in prep and dehydrate and scrub like this. Um, that leads to overexposure on the skin, which we don't want to do. And then it also just doesn't scrub well enough. So you can think of like this as like swiffering your floor and then this movement is like hand mopping your floor so you need to hand mop your floor when you're working with magpie you really need to scrub all those oils out. and you can see i fold it in just a teeny little guy so that i can scrub really well and i don't know if you noticed i did use a different wipe per hand to make sure like i don't have an oily little wipe when i'm moving to the next hand um I think there is more questions, but let me finish answering that rubber up question. So rubber up is one of the few gels of ours that does have HEMA and it has less than 5%, I believe. Um, so it's a pretty teensy amount, but if you have a client that just needs that extra adhesion, you need a little bit of HEMA in there. Rubber up is a good option. Um, I did forget primer. Sorry, I'm not sitting in my regular desk today. Um, I came over here on the quieter side while I did the live. And so my st I had to remember to bring all my stuff. Before I put the primer on, I'm gonna show you a trick that I do have. So build it, 
does work a lot, in my opinion, it works a lot better when it's warm. And so either you can put this under your leg while you do the entire prep work, or what I've been using is this coffee mug warmer. Um, you don't want to set the gel on here for too long. You don't want it like heating up and getting too hot. Um, but I plug my coffee mug warmer in, so I'm going to plug that in right now. And kind of while I'm doing the last few steps, so while I'm dusting off and dehydrating, putting the primer and base coat, I'm gonna put my build it here. This has like the lowest setting. And then you can set your bottle on like this. Um, I am I like to transfer mine into a pot and I'll explain that in a minute. So. I'm gonna use pump, pompous on her, is that how you say it? I don't know. So I'm gonna put the both of these on my mug warmer and just set this off to the side while I finish the, the primer. So I'm gonna put primer on here now. Um, it does require primer, but it doesn't require an extra base coat. So we're just gonna scrub that primer in. Remember primer is not cuticle oil, so we don't slosh it around everywhere. Was there anything uh, um, else I needed to answer? Cronail, no, but Cronail Studio said that's so good to know. My apprentice was asking for a human-free line. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so most, uh, I would say 99%, why won't that come off? Um, 99% of Magpie's products are HEMA-free, but we do have a couple of products that do have very small amounts just to help with adhesion if you need it, which I think there's five. So there's Rubber Up, there's Velvet Top, there's Get Foiled and Full Foiled, and Blooming Lovely. I think that's it. Sparkle Nails by Lindsay said, hey from Scotland. Oh, hi, that's cool. How are you doing? Is it like, is it nighttime there? Um, I think they're about eight-ish hours ahead, so oh. I don't know. I think it's like afternoon. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put rubber up as the base coat if you just came on and didn't hear why. So build it doesn't require a base coat. You can use this as your base coat, but if they're problem lifters, you're going to wanna to add um, something for, for them. So I'm gonna add rubber up. Um, I guess a little tidbit that I learned more recently about rubber up. Well, so Bonnie here is allergic to latex and so I kind of got a little worried at first, like, I'm like, oh, rubber up, I hope it doesn't have latex in it, but it doesn't. So <laughs> if you have anybody with a latex allergy, you can use any of those, but okay. So let me show you the difference with our scrub in. So I put product on the nail and then you like literally, sorry, this one's really full. You literally need to fan out the bristles and scrub it into the nail plate. So you can see my brush moving back and forth. This is scrubbing it into every little piece of the nail to make sure you get a really good adhesion. I am gonna cap the free edge, especially because a lot of her natural nail is exposed down there because she had so much lifting prior. Um, that's why I've left these shreds. If you hadn't like heard me say that, like she had a lot of lifting um, and I'm not sure why I didn't do her nails prior, but um, her nails are just kind of fragile on the ends. And so I'm gonna finish the shaping after I put the product on so that I don't keep like shredding the, the skin. So when applying the scrub in layer, it is very, very important that you are not touching the skin because we all know that like gel follows gel, right? And so if I get any tiny piece of gel on the skin when I even if I wipe it off the next gel layer is going to want to follow so you're going to get flooding if you touch the skin with this scrub and layer so just be very very cautious that we're getting right up close because we want this to stick on there 
but we're not getting on the skin. The way you can help from doing that is not getting a lot of product on your brush because we don't need a lot. We're just scrubbing this in. So we just need a very small amount. Um, so Lindsay from Scotland said, I'm good, thank you. It's 5.50 here. So oh, in the, the afternoon. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So it's not in the middle of the night. And then Nails by Kath said, sorry, don't know if you answered this question, but is rubber up always used as a base? And do you only use it if there's lifting? Um, so rubber up is only a base coat, yes. So you only use it for base coat. Um, so it does need to be applied like paper, paper thin in order for it to cure. So even though this is clear, because it has so much rubber properties in it, the light can't get, like it can't penetrate through like a large amount of this product because there's so much rubber properties. So it's only applied paper, paper thin, cured for 60 seconds. If I'm going to float like a teensy bit extra, I'm gonna need to cure it for two minutes to really ensure that that product gets cured. So this would be, this amount of product would be like a 60 second cure. If I was gonna put like, now I've wiped it all off so it doesn't wanna come out there. If I was gonna put like a little floaty like this, I would need to cure that guy for two minutes. So I'm just gonna wipe some of that off though. But a scrub and layer, just cure it for 60, so you can stick that in. <clears throat> oh, and then, oh, she was asking if it's yeah. always used. Yeah, so it's only used as a base coat, but you don't have to use it as build its base coat. It's just if there's lifting. Um, me personally, I don't put rubber up on every single person just because it does have small traces of HEMA in it, and I don't generally like putting HEMA on every person. Plus it's just not needed because it does act like literally a rubber tire and it's not going to lift or break. People kind of get used to their nails being indestructible and so they become even harder on their nails, which is not good for their nails underneath. Like they can really create like pressure pockets under their nail because they're like, oh look, I can do all this amount of stuff and my nails aren't lifting when in reality it's like you're causing damage under there that you can't see. So it just sticks almost too well maybe <laughs> that I'm like, I don't want to put it on everyone unless they are a problem lifter. And then Rochelle Jones says, such good info on rubber up, learning new stuff, thank you. Oh good, you're so welcome. And Nails by Kat said, oh good to know. Awesome. Okay, so we're almost getting into our build application so if you're just getting on um, I have my build it on my little coffee warmer just warming up while I put the primer on and well so I put it on when I'm like dusting off and gonna dehydrate the nail plate put my primer and then scrub in this base coat that's plenty of time on the mug warmer to get it warmed up um, if I was going to not use a mug warmer and just put it under my leg I would do that from the very beginning. Um, I would put it under my leg immediately when the client sits down so that I can get it like warming. So I've just found that I like build it better when it's warm and so that's why I'm doing that. It's not a requirement, that's not something that like Magpie says or that they put out there. It's just my personal preference. I like to work with my gels generally when they're warm but especially build it, I found it's, it's easier. So it's been sitting on here. It's gotten a little bit warm underneath. There's my hair. Okay, so I usually like lay it like that. I have emptied like my entire contents of Build It into this little pot. Hopefully I didn't put a ton of bubbles in there. There's a few bubbles. Um, I like working with it out of the pot rather than working with it out of the bottle. So I said I was gonna talk about its pros and cons. Um, it has a lot of pros in my opinion a few cons in my opinion one of the cons would be this neck here is really teeny and so every time i like dip my brush in and out i feel like i'm like it's like a suction or something it like shoves a lot of bubbles in there maybe i'll get a one i haven't emptied let's see so i haven't emptied this one so like i feel like when i put this down in there it's like suctioning bubbles in there and i don't want that so 
that was the con I would say is I just don't like how small this neck is and so I like working with it out of the out of the jar so I am going to give it a little stir because it probably really only warmed the bottom of my gel so I'm going to stir it around to make sure it's um, all nail neck 2022 said can you buy build it in a pot no it does not come in a pot it only comes in a bottle um and because this neck is so tiny i guess just be warned like you cannot tip it upside down and let it leak out it's never gonna do that um you have to take a gel spatula and stick it in this is not a gel spatula but stick it in there and you're gonna scrape the side pull out wipe it in my mistake i made with my clear is i stuck my thing in there and i like whizzed it around to try to get a bunch of it out and that created an enormous amount of bubbles and that was a stupid idea so just stick it in there and like scrape the side wipe it put it in the bottle it didn't take very long i mean it seems a little time consuming but it didn't take too long um to do that but i just prefer out of a pot I don't know if they're going to eventually come out with it in the pot, but um, for right now, it's just in the bottle. And Nails by Kath asked, if you have a client who is still lifting with rubber up, what would you recommend using? If they're still lifting with rubber up, um, it usually is going to come down to one they are going way too long in between appointments. So I think one of the reasons Bonnie here was lifting so much I don't know what was on there, but it was lifting a lot because she went like six and a half weeks. So if someone is going way too long, um, that is going to generally create like pocket lifts. I mean, they're putting like the pressure and like the weight of the nail is put clear at the end. So generally it's going to cause a little bit of lifting. If they're not going a super long time, the lifting is usually, in my opinion, going to be caused from the prep that the prep was not done accurately or correctly for Magpie products. So make sure you're using like prep and dehydrate, make sure you're using um, Magpie's primer. You can't use a different primer um, and really make sure you're using like a Magpie's light or a compatible light. And then what else was I gonna say? Oh, it will not stick if there's any dust, debris, cuticle left behind on the nail that's why a thorough thorough prep is very important if all of those things are covered it it does not lift so i would check into those so let me just explain what i'm doing here so if you were going to use build it as your base coat this is what i still would be doing is scrubbing it in with this rather than the rubber up i chose rubber up again because she is a problem lifter but even though i have that base layer on I'm now going to do a scrub and layer. So I scrub in a slip layer. This helps all the gel move. And then I'm gonna come in here and apply my product. So something I've noticed with working with this is it's a very light product. It's much, much lighter than Build Me Up if you've ever used that or lighter than Get A Grip. And so you don't need such like a heavy amount of product to put on there. Her nail's a little longer, so I might need that. Let's see. So I'm gonna place, sorry, I should walk you through this. I'm, I'm placing it down kind of where the apex goes. I tap it a couple of times, that helps get more gel off my brush. And then I'm gonna walk it around the cuticle, tap it around the cuticle. I then come and back right into the apex area. And I'm going to tick tock in smiles here. I didn't pop all those bubbles from transferring it into a pot, so we're gonna have to pop those. So see how I just tick tock and smiles all the way down? And you can see it levels out pretty nicely all on its own. Now this product is like, it's stiff enough that I can do two at a time. It's not going to run into the cuticles, but it still is very nice with the self leveling property. So I did already put a slip layer here and I'm gonna work, like right, I'm tapping my brush to get more gel off. That also kind of warms up the product. Then I'm going to push it around the cuticle. 
bring it back to the apex. I can tell she needs a little more. And then I'm gonna TikTok it in smiles. I might switch to a color that I did not scrape out last night <laughs> um, because I, I put a ton of bubbles in there and didn't pop them yet. So then I'm gonna get like just a little detail brush and I'm gonna guide this down the sidewall. So you can see that I only TikTok down, down like the middle portion of the nail and then I use a small brush to bring it down the side walls. That's just generally what I always do. Um, that way I keep the side walls nice and thin and don't get a bunch of bulky product. Let me work on getting those out of there. So popping those bubbles, you can like use an orange wood stick. Um, you can go back and forth like this that generally pops most of them let's see i don't have an orange wood stick out but can you see on the camera all those bubbles not really oh at least i can't then again i, I don't have a trained eye <laughs> Pro Nail Studio asked, are those empty pots or did you just put it in an old product pot? It's an empty pot. Sorry, I'll explain that in just a second. So I'm going to turn her hand to the side so that you can see the apex where I'm putting that. I'm just going to guide the product back here. Now I can turn it to the side um, for you because again, this product's not going to leak around. But generally I have their finger up and I'm looking at it from the side, right? So I'll turn this to the side so you can see. I'm gonna guide this back to the apex. Mostly because I like messed it around trying to pop those bubbles, but. Um, gel Nails by Felice said, mm -hmm. with warming up the pot, um, do you just like it because it, change it changes up the viscosity of it? Or yes. does it move better? both yeah and with it being like more of a loose viscosity it um sorry let me get this out with it being warm and being kind of a more thinner viscosity it self levels more i mean it self levels fine on its own but okay so you can stick that in there let me grab a different one Is that okay if I put a different color in it? What? Heat spike? Yeah. Oh. Let me put it on low heat for you. There we go. So, yes, I have <laughs> noticed that there is still a heat spike. So, I haven't warmed this one up. That will be fun. Um, the Yeah, there's still definitely a heat spike to this product. Um, I've put it on low heat and my clients have been fine and haven't needed to pull it in and out. Do you feel like you need to pull it in and out now that it's on low? Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use biscotti now. Uh, this one's not warmed up, but My brush keeps popping out of the cap. Have you had that problem? Um, I did yesterday when I was being really aggressive with it. <laughs> um, trying to like move stuff around like on a palette. It popped out, but it just shoved back in really easily. Like if you put it back in the jar and squeeze it on tight and then open it back up, it was on there. Um, but regular use, I haven't had it pop off. Um, were you like just regularly using it okay so i'm doing a slip layer on two nails so i can do two nails at a time and then so you can see like how it just kind of sits right there i'm going to scoop some product out right like that Gonna still follow the same techniques. I'm gonna put it right in the apex area, tapping it a couple of times. 
so I can get more gel off. And then I'm going to push it, kind of walk it towards the cuticle area. I rebalance into the cute or into the apex area and then start tick-tocking in smiles. Now if they haven't if you're doing a fill and they have enough product left, you can just swipe down the side or down the front so that you're not bringing like a huge chunk of product back down. So that one had a decent amount left. This one does not. There we go. So I'm going to have to TikTok a little bit further down on this one. She does have long nails and like wider nail beds. So I am using kind of a large amount of product. On some of these that like most of the product had to be filed off, I may have to do like, I'm gonna have to layer this into two times. And so I'll show you with this one. I'm not gonna put an apex in here yet. I'm just gonna do the nail nice and flat. And then when I do the second layer, I can um, go ahead and put in the apex. So the reason for this is so I'm not overloading the nail with product. Um, one, creating so much product that the heat spike is like unbearable. But then two, because this is a cover color, I'm allowing the product to get a full cure in between. And then another reason being, um, it's really hard to control a lot of gel at once. And so I didn't put it. Um, Nail Nook 2022 says, or asks, can you show how big of a beat you are laying down? Yeah. So I am working it down the sidewalls. That's what I normally do. With a little brush. And then you can see from the side, if I need to adjust the apex, if I brought too much product down, didn't really, but I can like scoot it back here. But you can see on its own, it really does um, self-level pretty well. Like there's not a lot of work that I need to do. I'm gonna get an orange wood stick. There's not a lot of work that I need to do to make it self level if you are laying it down correctly. I'm not gonna lie, I get super nervous when I'm like put on the spot and I'm live. <laughs> so I feel like I make like way more mistakes than normal when I'm doing that so just forgive me i'm human okay so i'm walking this down the side walls there's a little bit now i like i said i'm going to put a second coat on this one so i'm not worrying about the apex so much but i do want it to just be a nice flat layer and then on the next one i will go ahead and show you the size of bead I put on. Okay, go ahead and stick that one in. Katie Pullum said you're doing so great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this one is a wide, this one's a larger nail too that doesn't have a lot of product left, so I'm gonna need to do it in two layers. So I'm gonna put a nice little scrub slip layer. So just a nice thin layer that helps the rest of the product glide around. And then the size of B, let me grab some. This is a bigger nail, right? So, so this might be a little bit bigger than you would use. But I'm gonna use about that much. Beauty asks, will this be saved? Yes. Yep, so if you need to jump off early or anybody, anybody wasn't able to join, um, you can watch it later. Nails by Kayla Jo asked, what color base did you switch to? This one is Biscotti. I'm going to, I just want to show a couple different colors and she's going to do a, uh, a full coverage nail. So it's not, we're not gonna see the base coat color underneath. So it's okay if I use a couple different shades to show you, but normally, obviously we would stick with one shade. So 
So like I said, this one's gonna need a couple or like two coats. And so turn it to the side here. She had a lot of lifting. And so there's a little bit of product left here and there was a big, big dip of like a pocket lift that I had to get out of there. And so that's why there is um, kind of that dip there, but we're gonna level it in as much as we can right now. And then when we do the second coat, that will help. Rena said, loving, build it. Thanks for doing this live, Melissa. Oh, yes. And then Nails by Kayla Joe said, what are your favorite color bases so far? Mine are Pumpus and now Biscotti. Not Biscotti? And now Biscotti. Oh, <laughs> I said not Biscotti. Um, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, my favorite, I love Pompous. I love Bunny. I love, how, how do you say, is it Cherub? I just went through this yesterday so that I didn't sound like an idiot on this live and then I've already forgot. I was like, is it Cherub or Cherub? I say Cherub. Cherub? Okay. Well, I like Cherub. Turn it over here. So we're going to pull this back here. So like I said, she does have like a little bit bigger of nail beds and they're longer. So I normally haven't had to do two layers on a nail, but if you, if you, if you do have a client with larger nails, we do want to do a couple layers so that we don't um, cause massive heat burns and that the product can cure all the way there. Okay, let's see that one in. So I've had um, cream brulee sitting on the warmer while I was using, what's it called, biscotti. So I'm gonna use cream brulee now on this, these guys. I can tell that if this was, if you did a thicker layer, it would've burned. It would burn yeah. a lot, yeah. It's warm, but it's not like. Not too bad. Okay, mm -mm. this is cream brulee. I, is it cream? cream. Or, Crimp. Oh my goodness gracious. It, yeah. I can't That's say okay. anything. Creme. Creme brulee. I don't like that. Why isn't it not cream? <laughs> because it's French. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Sorry, French. I do like it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here's this guy's bead. I'm going to need a little more though. There we go. So again, we're going to place it down at the apex area, tapping my brush a couple times to get more gel off, walking it and tapping it around the cuticle, or I call it fluffing around the cuticle sometimes, leveling back out into the apex area. And then it is important, like, so you could see when I put stuff down or I'm moving around to the cuticle area, my brush is lifted up like this. When I go to transition to TikToking, my brush flattens like this. That way I don't dig trenches into the product. So I'm up like this, now I'm gonna flatten. So you can see I bring their finger up and I flatten my brush. That way when I tick tock and smiles, it will level out beautifully. Melissa, you crack me up. I know, I always am. I feel like a hillbilly American sometimes because I say stupid things and I don't know how to pronounce stuff, but it's okay. <laughs> okay, so again, putting it at the apex, floating to the cuticle, going back to the apex and flattening my brush so I can tick tock and smiles. So one of the pros I would say about Build It is that I don't have to tip the finger upside down in order to get an apex in there. Um, so it self levels en enough that I can, um, you know, I don't have to do a lot of work to it, but it stays in place well enough that I don't have to like worry about it flooding the sidewalls. Like you can see this guy's been sitting over here while I've been applying to this one and it hasn't flooded the sidewalls and the apex stays in place so I don't need to turn the nail upside down. I feel like that alone saves a ton of time. Um, now Chef Christina said, can you use Build It when using forms? 
Yep, so I sculpted mine out actually to test this out. I wanted to see how strong, like they, you know, when it came out, they said you can sculpt with this, but I'm like, but it's still a softer gel, right? So I'm like, how strong is it going to be? And so the best person to test it on is yourself, right? So I built it out solely out of build it and I thinned the crap out of it. I just messed that one up. Okay, I thinned it out thin because I wanted to see how strong is it when it's thin and you guys holy cow like I am a nail biter it hasn't been enough time for me to bite them off yet but okay you can stick those in it's freaking strong and like so if you look down it now it it may not look super thin to you but this is because I kept messing it up this has two layers of color a layer of glitter two layers of glitter and three layers that give me strength on top plus like that base of build it so you can see the build it was very very thin and this is freaking strong like i can't pinch it in i was putting it in my mouth and pretending to bite it like a naughty person and like it doesn't like it has the appropriate amount of flex like it flex enough that it doesn't like crack when it's pushed up against stuff but it's strong enough that it doesn't just like break off from being too thin <clears throat> um Rena said, hey, I still don't know how to pronounce pompous. Yeah, is it pampas, pompous? I don't know. <coughs> and then she said, hang on, let me scroll down. Okay. And she said, um, I agree. I figured out the problems I was having um, was I worked too fast and I wasn't giving it enough time to level in when I switched to doing two nails at a time. It works a million times better. Oh, good, 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 good. And then Nail Nook asked, when you TikTok, do you touch the nail with your brush? No. So this is going to be a two beater. So it's just going to be a nice flat layer. Oops, don't do that. So I didn't TikTok that one, as you probably just saw, um, because it's just going to be a flat layer. I don't need it to do anything fancy. I don't need to mostly the reason why I'm TikToking is because I want to keep the apex in the back I don't want to bring all the product forward and then it helps level it out so those large you can stick the whole hand in it's a five finger light um those other nails that I need to do a second coat on I will go ahead and do that I just finish all the nails so that it has enough time to properly cure I said that weird cure here whatever um i did write down some notes so that i wouldn't forget what was some of the pros i said um faster it can be applied quicker thin but yeah so i am faster with it that's for sure i am like slow as a freaking snail you guys when i do nails it's a really long time um <laughs> so using build it though my goodness i did a set so fast for me yesterday and i was just really impressed with myself the reason being because it just self levels so nicely i don't have to tick tock the nail or i do have to tick tock i don't have to flip the nail upside down it was just incredible i'm just all in all a fan and then okay yeah the other thing i said a pro was that it can be applied thick or thin so that's nice it can be applied to short natural nails um, because it can be go it can go thin without cracking it has the appropriate amount of flex that a short natural nail you can stick your whole hand in a short natural nail needs um but it has enough strength for that short nail and enough strength to be sculpted out like in my opinion this is pretty pretty close to a one size fits all product now i don't believe in a one size fits all product because there are some circumstances where you need to change things but this is pretty dang close it can be for thin natural nail application it can be for thicker structure gel it can be for sculpting it has enough flex for people that need flex it has enough strength for people that need strength it's just it's pretty incredible how like many things this thing can cover like how many services you can get or like how many different services you can offer off of one bottle so i'm doing the second coat on these because they were really flat right i need to put in an apex so when i'm doing a second coat i don't need a lot of product here and i don't need a lot of product here my product is mainly putting in the apex 
So I put that slip layer on so that it will still carry the product around. But I'm gonna focus my gel here in the center and then the apex area. And still tick tock it around there so it self levels, not touching the nail. And then I can just go ahead and wipe that down. Blending it into the sides. I'll blend it to this back area too. Yeah, we just get back just a smidge. Oh, I'm like, why is it? I used a different color, I forgot. That's pretty good, okay. Now what I'm doing is like salon life type, right? We don't always have three hours to do a service um, and make sure our line of light is 1000% show stopping perfect for every single client. I mean, maybe you do, but not everyone is going to. So like if the line of light is pretty dang good, I mean, there is a little squiggle right there. That's pretty good for like salon life, right? Um, if we're not doing perfection nails. She's got kind of a ski jump now on that guy. Was there any other questions or comments? Yeah, no, Chef Christina asked, when sculpting, did you use two beads as well? I used a few different beads, actually, because at first I was <laughs> going for like a natural look. And so I built the tip with um, like a frosted, or no, I built it with Blondie. And, um, then I did like clear and stuff in the back. So I think I did three beads when I sculpted it out, but generally you could probably just do two. Okay, you can stick those in. Okay, let me see. Just this one needs a little more of an apex. So I am gonna um, have to finish her, sorry, just get it back. Um, this song is a different tempo than we've been listening to, so it threw me <laughs> off for a second. <laughs> what was I even saying? Um, you're gonna have to finish, or? Oh, finish your free edge, yeah, finish file your free edge. Yes. Okay, so we can see that line of light. Okay, I will admit I am playing with these a little bit more than I have been playing with them, probably because the clients I have been doing like didn't have lifting and so they still had like a nice base layer on there. I just kind of floated it around and these ones were not and they're bigger so it took a little bit more, but generally I don't have to play with it quite that much. So second coat on the thumb. So a little slip layer. If you're ever having any gel, like having trouble with it leveling, that flat TikTok helps a million times. And then the little like wiggling of your brush. 
helps a lot too. I did try just for like to see how it would work. I did try to tip this upside down just to see like does it move a lot? Does it not move? And honestly, it didn't really even move. So you are going to want to sculpt your apex in while they're flat, like just looking at it from the side and stuff like that. You're going to want to sculpt that in. Um, sorry, I'm trying to concentrate also. Um, rather than relying on tipping the nail upside down because it doesn't really move, so it's not really necessary. Jones asked, what brush are you using? This is the Artie Brush 9. Yeah. And Rena said, yesterday I repaired a broken nail for my apprentice, and as I always do for repairs, I used Build Me Up Cloud for the free edge repair. And then I had Creme Brulee handy, so I used that to build the structure. And it accidentally was the best French ombre. <laughs> so really build it is the best in all in all. That's awesome. Yeah, I really like, I promise you guys, like I will give it to you straight. If I don't like something, regardless if I am like, I am a magpie educator, but I still believe in being real, right? And so I'm not going to say something's great if it's not great. I'm not going to say something's good if it's not good. Um, and I'm going to tell you the pros and cons of everything. I don't believe everything is absolutely perfect. No product is a one size fits all, but really I have been so impressed with Build It. And I'm so glad because I was waiting for it for so long. We were anticipating it for so long. And I'm like, well, it better be good. It better like live up to my expectations if I've been waiting this long for it. And it really has, like it really has. Um, I wanted to do a live though because I had a few questions on it and a few people have been struggling with it and so I wanted to get on and just kind of hopefully answer a few questions. Um, did both of all of those get a full cure? Um, did it go till the light went off? No. Oh, which this, one didn't? This one. This one? Oh, so the thumb didn't? Okay. Yeah. We'll let that one go back in. Magpie does recommend um, wiping the inhibition layer off and then applying the color. I don't know if that's because they usually do finish file the top, like in the UK, no matter what. We don't normally here unless you absolutely have to. So I'm going to go ahead and fix her, her free edge now, now that it has some strength to it. Um, so I don't know if it's that's the reason or if the if it needs to be wiped off anyway. I have done both. I've left the sticky layer on and I didn't have any issues with the color chipping. Everything was fine. And then I've also wiped the inhibition layer off, which has also been fine. Um, so I guess I'm not exactly clear on that, on if the UK Magpie is saying to wipe off the inhibition layer because they file or if they say that it needs to be, but. I just thought I should point that out there. Was there anything on my sticky note that I didn't say? Um, no, it seems like you... Did you go over requires... It requires a little bit of thought beforehand. It requires what? A little bit of thought beforehand. Oh, I think it... Yeah, because I like it warmed up, I think it does require a little thought before of remembering to... Um, sit on it or put it under your leg or put it on like a little mug warmer for just a few minutes. Don't leave it on the mug warmer for too long. You don't want it like roasting on there, but I like, I just, it warms it up quick because I never think too far ahead. <laughs> Um, Sparkle Nails by Lindsay said, hey, I'm one of the educators in the UK. You can go straight in with color unless you're filing. Oh, okay. That's perfect. Thank you for clearing that up. I was not, not sure when I was reading that. So, um, yeah, do you, in the UK, do you guys normally always finish file the, the top? I've just noticed um, a lot of uh, UK techs do that, and I just wondered... I think you guys maybe, I mean, 
clearly, I think from your pictures, I think people <laughs> in the UK or um, like Russia and stuff, they really have beautiful nails. Like, I just feel like if you compare an American set of nails to a European set of nails, you can always tell which one's which because the European nail techs do, in my opinion, more perfection. They do absolutely beautiful. I wonder if it's because part of the reason is because you guys do finish file everything into absolute perfection, whereas here we're like speed, you know? I don't know. This one needs to be cured. Oh, that's right. I need to be cured longer. That's just been my observation of like, why does American, like, American nails look great, too, but just when you put a side-by-side, -side, I'm like, there's a difference, I feel like. <laughs> um, she said, most of us haven't been having to file build it. It oh, self-levels so nicely, it's fine. Oh, amazing, okay. Yeah, I haven't been finished filing build it, and I don't normally... Um, file the free edge afterwards either but because her nails were a little fragile um i wanted to wait okay was there anything else on my sticky note i didn't say um <laughs> no i think you went over why you use it okay like yeah. yeah so well i guess i wanted to just make it clear because i've had a few questions of people saying like where does build it fit in because magpie has so many gels already like why would you use this one over another one um and i did say earlier i do think build it is pretty dang close to a one size fits all it's getting really close to that because it can be applied on short nails it can be applied thin but it can be applied on long nails it can be applied thicker it can be sculpted with, like it can do so many things with the appropriate flex and the appropriate strength. So it's pretty dang close, but there is still a reason to use Build Me Up. Like some of those people that are really aggressive on their nails that need that extra strength rather than flexibility, I would lean towards Build Me Up in the pot. Um, there's still a need for get a grip and give me strength combo because sometimes people do need way softer of a product. So this is a soft product, but sometimes people need extremely soft products. Um, so there would be a reason to still keep that combo around. But for most people, you can really be applying Build It on almost every single client, which is saving um, money, right? Because you're only having to stock a few things and it comes in such beautiful colors and such a wide range of colors that it fits like every skin tone and any need that you, any type of nail that you wanna do. Is there any like final thoughts or questions that you want to ask? Serena said, I have done both. A couple clients I finished filed, but a couple I haven't. Uh -huh. Both work well. It really does finish file nicely and easily and quickly. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, whoops, hello. A couple of these, um, the line of light was pretty good with that second coat, but I've, I mean, I've said it a hundred times, her nails were a little bit bigger, and so I just feel like it is harder to control a lot, and I do want these to be a little bit more perfect. Well, that one's pretty good, but I'm just going to make sure if there's any small imperfections, I can just quickly file that out. But I normally haven't had to do this. Actually, I don't think I've had to do it at all. Um, every client I've done, it's just, it lays out nicely. I haven't had to do any finish filing on the top. Um, sparkle nails, I Lindsay said, beautiful nails found live. What did she say? Beautiful nails found live. Oh yeah. <laughs> She had, okay, can you believe like her freaking cuticles? All I did was use a tapered skiver and then I nipped a few pieces, but I hadn't used my ball bit or raindrop yet. Like who in the world has that good of cuticles? Like she takes good care of them, that's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> she doesn't pick and bite them off. 
Okay. And then Nails by Kath said, so informative. Thank you. You're the best. You're so welcome. I'm glad that was helpful. Um, I'll stay on a little bit longer. I'm not going to make you stick around while I finish polishing her, but if anybody has any last minute questions, go ahead and ask. I'll stay on a few more minutes. And then this slide, yeah, it will be saved. Um, yeah, I didn't do this one. Um, Rochelle Jones said, uh, asked, if you were to do a regular gel mani, would you just do one thin coat to build it after your base coat? I would do, yeah, one thin floaty layer. So you would paint on your like slip layer and then I would just tap a little bit in there and you can tap and drag. You don't have to tick tock if it's like that short of a nail, right? But I would just tap and drag just to do a little bit of a layer, mostly because I do file off or like do um, a file fill rather than a soak off. So I need to have like a little bit of extra um, gel that I can file down to. So if, if that's what you do and you're not gonna be soaking off the gel, then I would apply like a slightly floaty layer, but it doesn't need to be thick. Yeah, and it's pretty awesome. I'm like, cause if you're familiar with Build Me Up, Build Me Up will crack, right? If you apply it too thin. So that's why it's not really meant for short natural nails or like a basic gel. And I'm talking about Build Me Up um, because it, it will crack if it's too thin. So the nice thing about Build It is it can be thin and it can be thick. Rena said, I love that it self bubbles but doesn't fall and make the sidewalls thick. Build it is 10 out of 10. Yeah, isn't that pretty incredible? Like, usually a gel that self levels that nicely, it like floats into the sidewalls and you have to like tip their finger upside down to get it to level. And like, I don't know how it has those magical powers, but it does. It just it self levels without getting into the sidewall. It's pretty awesome. Um, Nail Shop Christina said, thank you for doing this live. You're amazing. You're so welcome. And Rochelle Jones said, awesome. That totally helps. Thanks. I'm so glad you are so welcome. Um, if you do choose to, if you need to order some Build It, you can order from Magpie USA online. I do have an affiliate code with them that you can use. It's Melissa10 and you can get 10% off your order. If you're gonna shop in person um, at one of the two shops I mentioned, so at Rena's shop at Innovations or Christina's shop that's in St. George, you can't use uh, my affiliate code there because they are separate distributors. But if you talk to Rena, she may have a separate secret code kind of that you can use at her shop too. So if you wanna shop in person, and you still want to save at Rena's shop, um, ask her and she can still save, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to order online, you can use my code too. And Ms. Candace said, on my way to buy some now. <laughs> awesome. And Lauren Swan 304 said, finally such an amazing product, especially for some of my tricky clients with sensitive nails and allergies. Yes. Yeah, so you have, so Bonnie here, my beautiful model, has sensitive nails in my opinion. I think uh, she said she had thin nails even before she started getting nails done, but then with some maybe some repeated lifting before, I think it's kind of thin the nail played out. So she does have some thin layers in there. So in your opinion, the, the heat spike, mm -hmm. um, with it on low heat, you didn't feel like you had to pull it out? No. Okay, so it's still pretty good. Mm -hmm. My nails are extremely paper thin because I am a terrible person and rip my nails off. So okay. they're thin and I, I put mine on low heat and I still did have to take it out a little bit. But all of my other clients that have like super, or not super, but like have healthy nails, right? Just average nails. They, I, I put it on low heat. Some of them I put on just regular and they haven't had to pull it out, so. I would just kind of gauge with your client on which one. So I did use different <laughs> colors. So these two have pompous. These four have, what was it? It was biscotti, biscotti first and then creme brulee. Creme, yeah, creme brulee um, on top just because I did a second layer. Same with the thumbs here. So uh, 
Michelle asked, do you have a magpie lamp? Yeah, I usually cure it in a magpie lamp. Um, so magpie products are gonna cure the absolute best in a magpie lamp because that's what it's been um, tested for. It's tested in a magpie lamp. Um, and that really comes down to like the nanometers and stuff, not really the wavelength. If you can see in my camera, I have a, a little bit of a different lamp just because my magpie lamp is at my desk and someone else rents my desk on Friday, so I'm not able to take my lamp that day. Um, so I have a different lamp that is still compatible, but it's not a magpie lamp. But generally, I do only use a magpie lamp to cure my magpie products just because it's tested that way. And then Magpie Beauty USA said, I just put build it on my healthy nails and there was a slight heat, but mm -hmm. nothing extreme. I didn't have to pull out, pull them out of the lamp. Oh, good. That's awesome. Okay. Um, I just took my nails off too so that you could see. I mean, if you saw my before like a week ago, I picked my cuticles, but I did square because I feel like square also is one of those shapes that tends to chip with gel more. And you know, gel usually is best on rounder shapes. So I wanted to try square. I wanted to try them super thin and see how it holds up. And so far, really good. It's been a week in, which is really good for me, um, me personally. And they're, they're very, very strong and very thin. So I've been thoroughly impressed. So we're gonna pick some colors now. So I'm gonna jump off and then I will save this and repost it, but I will post it after pictures so you can see what kind of colors we chose and what we did. But thank you. So, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Rochelle Jones said, okay, I was curious because you said you put it on low and I wasn't sure if you could put magpie on low. Oh yes. Magpie lamp does have low. So the 92nd option is low heat mode. Oh, I just realized. Oh, Rena said things. that. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, <laughs> Rena. <laughs> okay. Was that all of them? Yeah okay awesome all right thanks for joining me live and i appreciate you guys so much you guys had great questions and good feedback thank you so much have a good weekend let's see now i never know how to end these things <laughs>